I'm absolutely delighted to be joined on Sourcing TV by Hane Chino. Um, Hane is Group ESG Strategy Director for WebHelp. So Hane, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and I wonder, first of all, if you don't mind sort of like giving us an overview to what your role entails. It's a, it's a very, um, it's a very current title, but obviously it's probably a very changing role, I can imagine. Hello, and thank you so much, Kerry, for having me today uh, on Sourcing TV. Um, it's really a pleasure to be with you today and, and speak about ESG. Um, indeed, ESG sometimes may be a bit confusing to people. Um, so ESG stands for Environment, Social and Governance. Um, it's the new um, terminology, let's say, after we spoke about CSR for so, so many years. Um, and uh, my, my role is really to um, design and roll out global program uh, across uh, web help. Um, so we're a, a BPO company specialized in, uh, in customer experience and we have 200 sites, 100,000 people um, and many initiatives, many ESG initiatives everywhere. But um, really at this level, you need to have uh, a global strategy, a global voice and also ensure best practice sharing, you know, between between our countries um, across environment, again, social and, and, and governance. So it's it's a fascinating uh, job and very um, under the spotlight at the moment um, in, you know, in the society, in the media um, and for our employees and clients. Yeah, absolutely. So we see ESG being one of the, the hottest topics that um, our members are, are facing and handling today. And we did just two weeks ago at our festival launch the GSA's approach to sort of a, um, standardization, standardization across ESG. So trying to help um, organisations understand exactly what they should be looking for across their service providers and things like that. But of particular interest, I think, um, for, for me is the work that um, you've been doing in impact sourcing. So WebHelp and congratulations and well done for the work that you've been doing in this space um, was awarded GSA's Social Programme of the Year Award this year. And it'd be really great to um, hear a little bit more about the work that you're doing across um, impact sourcing. Yes, of course. And, and again, thank you very much to the, the whole GSA and, and jury for, for that uh, award. Uh, I think it's a it's a great recognition also for all the teams that are working on impact sourcing um, uh, across web help. So I'm delighted to to share a little bit more about this this journey. Um, and maybe for for the audience, uh, it's always good to go back to the I would say definition of the the GISC, the Global Impact Sourcing Coalition, back in 2016. Now, where really impact sourcing is is a business practice where a company prioritizes suppliers that would intentionally hire and, and provide career opportunities and career development to people who otherwise would have limited prospects for um, formal employment. Um, and so that's the, let's say, the official uh, definition. Uh, um, and I think what's what's a bit specific with WebHelp is that um, we, we tried to, when I started in ESG at WebHelp in 2020, um, we realized really that there was more than the impact hiring piece and there was a whole range of impact that a company like us uh, could make um, and um, thanks to the, the campaigns and the partnership with our clients. So you have the impact on education uh, with the relationship with universities and, and school, local schools. You have the impact, what we call employment, which is how do you ensure that there is inclusion of your um, employees in the labor and in the society through, you know, transportation, canteen facilities, um, medical staff um, on site, things that these uh, impact workers would not have access to otherwise. Um, there's also impact on career development um, uh, to help them grow within, within business and getting certif certified. Uh, and finally, there is impact that you can do on procurement as well, on your own um, supply chain. So this is this whole range of impacts uh, through impact sourcing. That uh, was my first project when I started uh, with ESG at WebHelp um, to, to really let's say, codify it and, and give a voice to it uh, and spread the word across the organization. Okay, excellent. And how 
big as this program today? I mean, I, I do recall reading a press release coming out from Web Help that really talked about the impact workers side of things and that, you know, you were going to work to a target of a certain number of impact workers or certain percentage of your new employees being impact workers. Yes, exactly. Um, so as I always say, you, you know, you cannot talk about ESG without um, talking about your objectives, your KPIs and, and your, your measurements. Um, and when I again in 2020, when we started the, um, the ESG group function, um, we decided to really set an objective on the impact hiring piece because you have to start somewhere. Um, so we had a, a bottom-up and a, a top-down approach. Um, uh, we already, we asked our countries, basically, what do you think you can do in terms of impact hiring this year? Um, and it's it's funny because in ESG, you know, you, you're really humble. Um, and so all of our countries said probably around 5%. Um, so we started with this target. We said, okay, let's go for 5% in 2021 in terms of uh, new hired, so 5% of all of our recruits that year um, uh, would, would need to be um, from impact hiring channels. And it turn, turns out that at the end of 2021, we had actually done more than 10% of all of our new recruits through impact hiring channels, um, which, was, which was great news. I think it was also helped by COVID and um, the fact that long-term unemployed is a category and two years after COVID, of course, you had still a great number um, uh, of, of people who would be hired through yeah. um, impact hiring channels. Um, so yes, it's very important to set targets also for the teams to know um, how they're progressing. Um, this is one figure, but I would also stress that um, there's more behind, you know, you have to now monitor also how long do, do these hires stay with you, you know? Are they progressing? Um, are, are they um, having really a career career opportunities, et cetera, et cetera? So that's one KPI that we we we, we talk about. But um, I think there is much more um, to follow behind. Okay. So just out of interest, you know, where are these impact workers located around the world? I mean, is it is it sort of like in you know rural areas of, you know. Um, Poorer, poorer countries, or are you actually managing to find impact workers here in the United Kingdom as well? Yes, um, so very good question, because there may be a, a, an idea that you can only do impact sourcing um, in maybe in Africa or in, you know, in, in, in other countries um, rather than Europe, for instance. And our, our principle was that we need to establish impact hiring um, um, channels and initiatives everywhere where we are. Um, it's, uh, so it's about, you know, finding, first of all, identifying what is the local societal issues that you want to, that you want to tackle. We have centers um, in, in England, we have centers in Scotland, we have centers in India, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and each local market is, is different. So maybe South Africa, for instance, will of course tackle um, youth unemployment, but our um, our teams in Malaysia were tackling um, uh, people with disabilities and, and employment of, of people with disabilities. Um, in LATAM, in Colombia, um, they tackle um, uh, the crisis of the refugees from Venezuela. Um, so that's fascinating because each team has their their focus. Uh, of course, there are some common um, common topics as well. I mentioned pe people with a disability. Um, uh, but long-term unemployed is one. And you have countries where very, with very specific focus, like for instance, in the US, um, one focus would be veterans, which would not necessarily be one focus in France, for instance. Yes, yeah, so from my perspective, I can absolutely see that it is the right thing for organizations to do socially. Um, but uh, I don't think there are many organizations that are really, you know, seeing it that way at the moment. And they're more so looking at, you know, are there any business benefits behind it? Do you have any inputs from your experience on, you know, why it's not just the right thing to do, but it's a good thing for Web Hub to do? Yes, of course. Um, so of course it's, it's the right thing to do, but it's, it's also the right thing to do for us, but also for the clients. But I do understand as well that if you've not, you know, if it's your first time in in hearing the impact hiring and impact hiring program, 
um, you may you may be wondering, you know, will I have the same quality of delivery? Will um, will our our new recruits be um, uh, as loyal as, as other recruits, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So it's very important for us um, who are like specialists in ESG to create the business case and demonstrate the value of impact hiring. Um, and it's it's a lesson that we learned, especially with, with our colleagues in South Africa, who were the first um, really to, to drive impact hiring uh, within Web Health back in 2016, to start small, creating pilots and, and really monitoring the results, uh, whether it's the performance, whether it's um, uh, the, the engagement uh, of the, the impact workers, whether it's the, uh, um, it's the attrition or, or the loyalty. Um, and once you, you do that, and this is what they've done, you can increase and you can convince clients of ops teams um, to, 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 to work on impact hiring. And just to give you an example, for instance, in South Africa, they started with a pilot of 20 uh, impact workers back in 2017. Two years later, um, their clients uh, actually went for the full peak period. So 250 uh, impact workers and peak period was only managed by impact workers. In, within two years, they managed to convince the client that it was the right thing to do and a good thing to do. Yeah, that is fantastic. And how are you finding it bringing customers on this journey with you? Is it is it really a, a simple sell um, or, or what would be your advice to other organizations um, and to customers, to the end buyers, about why it's the right thing to do. So I think there are many people you have to uh, onboard, um, starting with the sales teams, uh, of course, because they are the ones, or the account management teams, and they are the ones who will be in direct contact with the clients. So we do spend a lot of time um, uh, explaining to them the, the models, um, the business cases, um, having also kind of reflects to always propose the option. The client may not um, may not accept it at the beginning. Um, and I think it's also a topic of uh, creating a lasting relationship with our clients. I've seen I've seen some clients um, uh, two years ago who were not really keen on starting impact hiring now because they, they didn't they didn't know the benefits. And we worked on plenty of other um, diversity and inclusion topics within the existing teams. And a year and a half after, um, our clients came back to us and said, "I want to do impact hiring now." Um, and we deployed we deployed it in 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 several countries uh, where we were operating for them. Um, so it's not it's not happening overnight. Uh, it's a matter of trust, I think, and a matter of um, really explaining it to all the teams uh, involved, clients or internal. Okay, so. Um what next for Web Health and its impact sourcing and even broader ESG agenda? Um, so what next? So in the last uh, in the last eighteen months, we worked on our standards based on the GISC. We have about sixty partners now across the world. Um, and really what's next is to systematically every time we open a new a new country, uh, embed uh, impact hiring from the very beginning um, so that we don't have to <laughs> recreate the wheel afterwards. Um, so that's one thing uh, in every new country. And secondly, uh, expanding the number of countries where we are already, where we have operations and uh, where we would be able to do our impact hiring. And of course, I think it's what's next is also to, again, propose more systematically to our clients um, impact hiring solutions um, when designing operations um, uh, for them um, and constantly improving at monitoring the, the results. I talk about the number of hires, but there are more KPIs behind. I think everyone is after the impact measurements. Um, and, uh, and yeah, this is something we're working on as well. I think it's an absolutely phenomenal journey that you guys are on. It's a fantastic storyboard that you've created already, you know, hiring people that um, are from disadvantaged backgrounds, whether that's unemployed youth here in the UK or in South Africa. So what would be your one piece of advice to any organization thinking about embarking upon the use of impact workers? Um, ha, difficult one, but I think really um, it, 
it would be to really believe in the in the power of the pilots, starting small, proving your case, and then little by little um, expanding. That makes sense to me. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing the story today. Any final words from you? Any final comments you'd like to share? Um, I think we're all in in that journey. I know a previous um, a previous of uh, interviewees uh, on your sourcing TV was was saying um, that indeed we are we are all in. It's not a matter of competition. Uh, it's really a matter of learning from everyone's experience. I find everyone in ESG very benevolent uh, in that respect, uh, and I'll i love to you know share this these experiences. Um, feel free to contact me. Uh, if you want to discuss further, because it's it's really uh, an amazing topic. It is indeed. So thank you very much, Hannah. And I completely want to echo what you're saying. You know, this. I think the pandemic has changed our industry really significantly. There's so much more willingness to collaborate rather than see each other as as competitors, and that that's got to be one major major positive that has obviously come about from something really really you know. Awful, but um, but yes, the sharing is really appreciated. So thank you so much for sharing your story, and please continue to share your best practice and impact sourcing with us. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much, Gary.